Hey folks, welcome to Open Source Options. Today I'm going to show you how to make this map. These are such cool maps. It's made from a relative elevation model, also known as a detrended digital elevation model. And you can see the river flowing through. Um, this is the Snake River uh, near Grand Teton National Park or in Grand Teton National Park. And you can see the channel, you can see the low spots, and you can see these benches and terraces coming outside. And I've got this in 3D view so we can pan around and look at it. I'm going to show you how to make this map today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to start from a whole brand new QGIS project so you can follow along and see exactly what's going on. I'm just going to discard what I'm working on now and we'll get started. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some data. Um, you can take a look here at the USGS LiDAR Explorer. Um, I downloaded some one meter data from this area right here. You can download it for any river you want. You can show where LiDAR data is available. And once you have that, you can click on this tab over here. You can draw an area of interest by holding down control, clicking to drag, and then it will pull up the DEMs within the area of interest and you can select the DEM you want to download. I'm not going to go through that with you today, um, but you see how easily that can be done. Okay, now, once you have your data, you want to add in uh, your elevation model, which is this one right here. So I'm going to add in this elevation model. It's going to take just a sec to pull up. Okay, here we go. So we can see our elevation model here. We can't see the river very well. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just adjust my symbology so I can see the river. And the way we do this is coming over to our min and max values. But first, I need to know what those min and max values are. I can keep the minimum about the same. I'm assuming the river channel is going to be a minimum value. Now here I'm using this raster value tool. Um, you can get this as an extra plugin. You can also use this uh, identify features tool up here and you can click to get elevations. I'll just do this. So down here, my elevation should be about the minimum. Um, this looks like it's the river here. If I go back to layer styling, 1992 is my minimum and we're getting values close to that here. Now I wanna set my maximum to the river maximum, to the maximum elevation of the river channel which is going to be in this area, which looks like it's about 2016, 2015, 2017 in there. Let's go up here and go to layer styling and let's set this just to 2020. And you can see how immediately that gives us um, a view of the river. Now let's come in and change this to single band pseudo color. Um, I'm going to change this to blues. That works, whatever color you like. I will invert this. Oh, and I need to come back and change this to 2020. And there you can see where the river is. We could come, I'm gonna do a different color that I like a little better maybe. Let's do this Mako here. Um, and let's invert this color ramp. Oops. You can invert by right clicking on here and clicking invert. And there you go. Now you can see that I have my river. I can see the lower end and the upper end. And this just makes it a little easier to visualize things. Okay. So let's talk about what a detrended or relative elevation model is really quick. So what we're trying to do here is if you look at this river and we can see it with this gradient, we can see that all rivers have an inherent slope to them. Water flows downhill, thus the upstream end is going to be higher than the downstream end. And when we have this slope, it adds in this extra gradient that makes it hard to visualize exactly what's going on um, with the river. So where is the channel? What's the elevation for the river if we take that downstream slope out of it. It helps identify those ridges, those terraces, um, and other geomorphic features. So essentially what we have to do is remove the slope from the river. We have to set the riverbed elevation to be zero everywhere, and then the places outside of the riverbed represent the elevation above the riverbed. That's what we're trying to do with this type of elevation model. And once again, it's called a relative elevation model, REM, or a detrended DEM, okay? So we're going to have to, we're going to, the steps we're going to take are we're going to just get some symbology here so we can see where our river is. 
Then we're going to digitize the center line of this channel. Then we're going to sample the elevations at that center line. We're going to interpolate those elevations outwards, and we're going to subtract the interpolated elevations from the original DEM, and that will take that downstream trend, detrending, um, out of our elevation model, and we'll be able to see those local features a little better. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have this here. I'm going to go to my layers panel. I'm going to copy and paste this so that I have it again. Okay, and now I'm going to come up to this top one and I'm going to change the symbology. I'm going to change this to hill shape. And I'm going to change the Z factor, I don't know, to let's say six. Okay, and you can see just how that exaggerates this. Now, one thing to notice, you see how there is some gridding in here. It's an artifact in the DEM, it's okay. This is a one meter DEM. If you're using something coarser like a 10 meter DEM, this gridding could end up being really bad. Um, so you might wanna use a higher resolution DEM for this. Now I'm gonna come over here on my layer styling panel to the opacity and I'm gonna pull this down somewhere 40, 50% range. Now you can see with that hill shade showing, we can really, really see where our river channel is and we can see it quite well. Now, I wanna just make the note, I'm expecting you have some, some QGIS knowledge for this. If you don't have that knowledge, it's okay. Um, you'll probably just wanna get a little familiar with QGIS before following this tutorial. I have a course you can take that will get you right up to speed so you can follow along with this or you can check out some of my free resources. Okay, so let's get going here. Um, I wanna create a new layer that's gonna represent the, the channel center line. So I'm gonna come up to layer, uh, create layer. I'm gonna make a new geo package and I'm gonna save this so I have it for later. Um, and I already have one here, but I'm gonna just rename this one for YouTube. So we'll call it YT and we'll save it. I wanna make sure the geometry type is a line, line string. If you're using a shape file, which is just fine to do, you're gonna get a slightly different option for geometry. Just make sure it's aligned. I wanna set this to my project CRS. More specifically, I want the CRS to be the same as my DEM. Here, my DEM is NAD83 UTM zone 12 North. Um, just check and make sure that you have your project CRS the same as your digital elevation model. You can check that, I guess, once I create this, you can check it by going into the properties here. This is all I need. I'm gonna click OK and create this layer. Now what I'm going to do is come to the editing toolbar here and you can go to edit here if you need to um, or add the toolbar. But I'm gonna to go to the editing toolbar, I'm gonna to toggle editing on and I'm going to create a new line feature or add line feature. So I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna zoom in on my channel and I'm gonna stay within my DEM and I'm going to just click to digitize this. Now you might wanna change your symbology. I guess it's gonna be red at first, so you're probably okay. Red's the default, I believe, color for new features, red or yellow. Just make sure it's visible, and I'm just, I'm just uh, left clicking along following this channel. And you can zoom out a little. You don't have to be exact, we wanna be close. And as I'm doing this, I will say that these relative elevation models are often used for flood analysis. I want to stress, and you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. I want to stress that the way we're creating this model today is not going to be sufficient for real flood analysis. Like you don't want to go and do uh, insurance ratings with this kind of flood analysis. You don't want to do any kind of scientific analysis or a real assessment. This can give you a general idea of which areas might flood first and it can give you a relative idea of their height above the channel, but it is not sufficient for real flood analysis to do that. You need to be much more accurate uh, than we're going to be in your interpolation of the channel. Um, and you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. Okay, we're getting down to the end. Okay, there we are. So now when we're done, we can right click to end the feature. It gives me this. I'm just gonna click okay. And there's my center line. Real quick, I'm gonna come over here to my layer styling. If you don't have the layer styling panel, um, you can go to, to view panels and just check on uh, layer styling here. It makes it so easy to adjust symbology. I'm gonna change the color to a red because that's easy to see. 
And I'm going to adjust this to points and I'm gonna put it up to three. Actually, I'm gonna put it down to two. And that will give us a really uh, easy to see center line. Okay, so once I have that center line done, I'm now gonna come here and click Save Edits and I'm gonna to toggle editing off. All right, so what we have here is we have a line with vertices on it. What we need to do is we need to sample this uh, kind of all the way along this line so that we can know what the elevation of our riverbed is. And that's gonna be our zero elevation that we're then going to use to set the riverbed elevation to zero as we do our interpolation. But what we need to do first is make sure we're somewhat equally spaced. And to do that, let me grab the pan tool here. Um, we're going to generate points along a line. I want to generate them at an equal, at an equal interval. I don't want to do them too close because I can see too many points, but I don't want to do them too far apart or I lose resolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the measure tool to measure my channel width, and I'm going to um, space these points out about channel width apart. So we can see that it's about 65, 67 meters at this location. Um, so we'll space these out at 60 meters apart. Okay, so I've got that. Now we can go to, I'm gonna search for this. And I believe this is, I think it's points along geometry. Yeah, so you can do points along geometry here. It's also in the processing toolbox. Um, let's just go find that up here. So here's the processing toolbox. You can search here for points along geometry, and it's here in vector geometry, points along geometry. So that's the tool we use. So the input layer, we want to use this uh, center line that we just created. We want the distance to be about our channel width. You don't have to be exact, just be close. And we'll do it like that. I'm going to create a temporary layer here. Um, that'll work out just great. And I'm going to click right here, run. Okay, so that's done. Let's close that. And now you can see we have these points that have been spaced evenly um, right along a river line. And this is exactly what we need. So now what we're going to do is at each one of those points, we're going to pull out the elevation of the DEM. I'm going to come down and search for this again. And we're going to sample raster values here. And I'll show you in the processing toolbox where that is. So I go here, I'm gonna search for sample raster values. It's in raster analysis, sample raster values right there. So my input layer is interpolated points. This has to be a point layer. My raster layer is going to be my original layer. These two are the same. It will not matter which one I use, so we'll take that. Um, we can have an output column prefix. You can leave that blank. I am going to change this to elev, so I know it's an elevation. And we can once again keep this as a temporary layer. You can save it to a file if you want to, just so you can come back. I'm saving these as temporary because I've gone through this already and have the layers. Um, so I don't need uh, to keep a second copy here. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that. And it's complete. So now let me show you what we have here. So we have these interpolated points. And if I open up this attribute table, you'll notice, oh, sorry, wrong thing. That was the interpolated points. We have the sample points here. And if I open up this attribute table, you'll see now that we have these elevations. And these are the elevations all along the river. And it's great because you can see that we start out at 2,018 meters um, at the upstream end. And if we go to the downstream end, we're 1,993 meters. So you can see just that gradient as we look right there. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to actually do some interpolation to spread this out over the entire raster. Okay, these are only a specific points. We want to spread this out over the entire raster so we know a continuous surface, what channel elevation is associated approximately with any point on this raster. Right now we know it for these specific points. What if I wanna know what the channel elevation is associated with the point out here or over here? That's where the interpolation comes in. So we are going to do inverse distance weighted interpolation. So I'm gonna search down here for IDW. I want this IDW interpolation tool right here. 
and I will show you where that is once again in the processing toolbox. So let's go IDW interpolation, and we're gonna to go to the um, interpolation toolbox and IDW interpolation, it's that one right there. Okay, and now we're going to put in a vector layer, which is going to be our points. Um, we want the, in the interpolation attribute, this is important, we want this to be our, oh, sorry, wrong one, sample points. We want the interpolation attribute to be our elevations, and then we're going to add this. Okay, so make sure you click that plus button, and it will add it right here. Make sure the type is set to points. We can leave the default coefficient. So what inverse distance weighting is doing? If you think about it, it's doing exactly what it says. So if you think distance weighted, um, if we take our distance and weight something by how far it is from something else, the farther away it is, we get a bigger value because that distance is greater. So inverse distance weighting is just saying the farther away something is, the lower weight we give it. And so we're basically weighting, we're determining the elevation. I'll show you what I mean here. So we're determining the elevation at this point that's unknown by the elevation of the closest points we do know. So these points right here, which are closer, are going to have a greater impact on that elevation value than a point over here that's farther away. That's all it's saying, even though it sounds complicated. Okay, so now the extent, I want this to be the exact same extent as my original layer, which is right here. So we'll add that in. Now, notice something here. This is a one meter DEM. The suggested output size is 10 centimeters. That is way too fine. It's gonna take forever for that to interpolate. So what we wanna do here is this is a coarse interpolation. We're just gonna make this 10 meters. It, the interpolation will happen much faster and we can resample it back down to match our one meter resolution later. It's just gonna be a lot easier. Okay, so I'm gonna save this again to a temporary file. This is the one you might wanna to save to an actual file on, on disk so that you can come back to it. I'm gonna go ahead and click run and then we'll wait for this to go. It's gonna take just a minute. So while this is going, um, I have an email list. If you guys want to sign up, there's a link below. Um, and you'll get first access to all my content. You'll know as soon as it gets posted. And you'll get uh, exclusive content and deals for courses. Now you can see our interpolated raster. And it looks pretty boring. Um, but you can kind of see a hint of a channel in there. And you'll notice if we drag this down here you'll notice um, that our highest elevations occur right at our, the upper end of our channel, the lowest ones at the downstream end of our channel, and these ones are kind of one between. All this is doing is associating um, a channel elevation with every point on the map. Okay, great. So now what we need to do is we need to go through and we need to resample this back down or up or whatever you want to say to one meter to our original DEM resolution. And that is really easy to do. We're just going to go to raster. We're going to go, I think it's projections. Yes. And warp. We want to reproject this. So our input layer is our interpolated layer. Um, our resampling method. This is important. Nearest neighbor is good for discrete data. We want to do bilinear. You could do cubic. We're going to do bilinear. Cubic would also work if you want to try that. Um, the output file resolution. We want this to be the same as our input file resolution, or the same as our original, which is one meter. I don't know if I can, oh, but we can access it. So we open these properties up to the original. We can come down here, and you can see that our pixel size um, is one meter, and negative one meter, and we have some floating point stuff going on here. So it's one by one. That's what we want, is one meter. Okay, so we have that set here. We are going to set a high compression profile so we don't take up too much disk space. Um, we can leave this geo-referenced extensive the output file to be created. We want to set this to calculate from layer. We want this the same as our original layer. And we want the CRS to be the same as our original layer, which is the project CRS. And Here's our reprojected, and I'm gonna see, you, you wanna save this one. This is the one we're gonna use in the calculation. I'm gonna save to a file, and I'm going to save it here, and we'll just add the YT on the end, so we know this one was for YouTube, and we'll save that. Okay, 
So now once we have that, we can go ahead and click run. And this once again, will take just uh, a little bit of time to complete, but it won't take too long at all. Um, and you're noticing that this is going pretty quick. If we would have done the interpolation um, to that 10 centimeter grid size it wanted, or even to that one meter grid size, it would have taken a lot longer than running these two tools back to back. Um, okay, this is taking just a sec to finish up, so I'm gonna pause the video so that you don't have to, uh, to listen to me the whole time. All right, so that's done. We can close this box now. And we have our interpolated elevation right here. Um, you can see it looks the same as it did before, maybe just a hair smoother. It's fine. Now comes the actual analysis. This, the operation to create a, an REM or detrend DEM is really simple. I'm gonna go to rest the calculator, open that up. And now we're just going to take our original and we're going to subtract our interpolated. Uh, make sure you use this one meter interpolated, not the original. And we're gonna take an output layer and I'm gonna call this detrended one meter. You can call it REM. And I'm also gonna make sure that I named this YT for the YouTube version. And we're gonna make, we're just gonna keep these the same. And I'm gonna click okay. And it's gonna take just a minute. And remember, if you want to get these updates uh, as soon as possible on these videos and tutorials, just sign up for the email list. I'll leave a link in the description. And we are almost done here. There it goes. Give it just a second to add that layer in. And then we'll do a little bit of cleanup. Taking just a sec here. Okay, there it goes. It's edited. I'm going to turn a bunch of stuff off. So let's turn off our interpolated, our sampled interpolated points, um, center line, this interpolated. Okay, we are going to leave it just like that. Okay, so now we can't tell really if it's different. We can see a lot of weird stuff going on here. Let's go ahead and adjust our values. Now the first thing to notice is notice our minimum and maximum values are way different than they were. This was like almost 2,000 and this was, you know, well over 2,000. Now we're ranging from negative four to 700. So something has happened here. Let's change this to single band pseudo color. Let's change this color ramp to um, blues. And yep, that looks right. And now we can adjust this just like we did before. Um, we can come in here and I'm gonna change this to about zero and I'm gonna change this to about 10. And now when we zoom in, we can see that it looks a lot more like what I was showing you. We can see that river elevation is adjusted. Let's just adjust these values just a little bit here. Let's go negative 0 0.5. And let's make this, let's just do 10 again. Now we can do a little more adjustment here and we can set this to equal interval and we can come in and let's make this six and we can change these intervals. And this is gonna adjust our symbology. So if I make this one, oops, I didn't double click on it. Let's make this one. Let's make this 2.5. Let's make that four. And you can see how it's changing over there as I do this. And let's make this nine. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you a cool trick we can do. So let's take this one right here, this 10. If I double click on that, um, I can come down here and make this transparent and it disappears. And now what I'm looking at is my, um, uh, sorry, I can't think of what I'm talking about, my hill shade right here. Let's turn this one off and there's my heel shape. So I can come put that on top and there you go. And we can take a look at this heel shade and let's just make it a little more transparent like that. And now you have a relative elevation model or a detrended elevation model. Uh, looks really good. You can really see those river details. Uh, and so here you can see 
how before, and actually, let me see if I just slide this up here and turn it on. Okay, awesome. So let's just take a look at the difference here. We have way more contrast with our relative elevation model because we have the full range of colors. We can just get an idea that this, how high this bench is above or terrace. I should know what these things are. I'm not great at it though, um, above the actual river. Um, and you can see if we zoom out, you can see we don't have that downstream trend here. Whereas if we turn our old one on, you can see that downstream trend occurring. And here we don't have that. Um, and so there you go. There's how you can create your detrended or relative elevation model. Super cool to look at. It makes super cool graphics. You can set up a 3D view with this and it looks really great. Um, that's all for today, guys. I hope you found this entertaining, useful, and informative. Um, and as always, feel free to reach out to me with comments or ideas and check out the email list if you want to be the first to be notified about all these videos and the stuff that I post in the blog. Speaking of which, there is a tutorial for this on the blog if you prefer to read and see those visuals. Thanks for watching.